I just upgraded my Confluence to premium and now I have access to automation rules. So in this video, I'm going to give you my very first look at how automations work in Confluence. I've been using automations rules for a really, really long time in Jira and I absolutely love them. And I'm really excited to see how Confluence automation rules work and I'm gonna be comparing them with Jira to see if Atlassian has carried over that really, really awesome functionality over to Confluence. Now, one of the things that I do wish Atlassian would do, which is something they do in Jira, is that all user tiers, regardless of free, standard, or premium, have access to the automation rules. And unfortunately, in Confluence, only premium subscribers are able to use automation rules, which I think is a miss from Atlassian's side. But here we are nonetheless, we are gonna be trying them out for the very first time. And if you've never done an automation rule in Confluence, this might just be the reason to upgrade to premium. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And most importantly, don't forget to check out the links down below as I have links to my merch, to my courses, and of course, to all the sponsored links for the people that help make these videos possible. So special shout out to my sponsors. All right, let's jump into Confluence and take a look at automation rules. Don't wanna sleep in, cause I got something to prove. I gotta take what I hate and finally make a move. Right, so now that I am on premium, I am going to now have extra options inside of my Confluence. And so first things first is I wanna go over to spaces and I wanna go into a space where I wanna do this automation rule. Now it is my understanding that these automation rules like in Jira can be global so they can impact all of your spaces or as a better practice, in my opinion, they can be specific to the space. So let's go take a look at what they look like within the space. Once you're in the space that you want to do this automation rule in, you're going to want to click on the space settings here. And now you should see this automation section here. Quick disclaimer, if you don't see it, that probably means most likely, if not, this is probably 100% true, you are not on premium cloud confluence. You're probably in data center or in a free or standard version of confluence. So you must be in premium in order to be able to do automation. So if you don't see it in the comments, don't tell me that you don't see it. Uh, rather go and upgrade your Confluence and then they sh it should be there. All right, today's tutorial is brought to you by Release Team. Successful DevOps requires a balance of people, processes, and tools. Release Team's experts can help you succeed at every step of that journey. Their expert staff works to understand your unique needs, explore your options, and deliver a solution tailored to your objectives and culture. Visit releaseteam.com for more information. So let's click on automations. And so right out of the gate, this looks and feels just like it does in Jira. Now I'm not gonna spend too much time here. I just wanna kind of show you how to make an automation rule and kind of get one going first. But if you're completely new to automation rules, let me know in the comment section down below and I can give you a little bit more of an in detailed view of automation rules. But in a nutshell, just five second introduction, automation rules help you simplify tedious things, annoying things, manual things inside of either Confluence or Jira, and you let the tool do it for you. Now, every single user has the ability to create automation rules, and they're really just, just designed to make your life easier. They're there to do some of the more, again, like I said, annoying things that typically you do manually and you, there's a lot of clicking involved. And so through the use of automation rules, and we're gonna explore what's possible in this video, but through the use of those rules, then Atlassian or Confluence or Jira, if you're over there, will take care of these nitty gritty details for you. So automation rules are a huge time saver. And honestly, in my opinion, one of the reasons why I would recommend that you upgrade to Confluence Premium. So let's take a look at how to actually create these automation rules and see what's possible. So here we're gonna create the rule. And as I mentioned, this rule is gonna be specific to this space. I'm not in the global automation, so this is just gonna happen here. Now, if you are completely new, there is a tour that you can take. I don't recommend you take it if you're watching this video because you'll already be an expert by the time you try to do it yourself. But if you just wanna see Atlassian's tour, you can click next and it'll basically walk you through how to create your first automation rule. Now I am not gonna follow my own advice, specifically since I've never created an automation rule in Confluence, I'm gonna skip the tour and I'm just gonna experiment and try it out for the first time all on my own. Again, do as I say, not as I do. All right, so here we are. This looks and feels exactly like it does in Jira. 
obviously the biggest difference is that the triggers are going to be appropriate for Confluence and not Jira. So instead of like issue created, we have task created and we have space deleted and space archived. And you can see there's a bunch of new items in here and a bunch of popular ones here. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to find a good one. We're going to find page published. I think this is the equivalent of issue created. And so I have a feeling that this is probably going to be a, be a very popular one. So let's just say that we want to, when we publish a page and it's published by a specific author, so a specific person in your company, we just want to add a label to that page. And let's go and, and see how easy this might be to achieve. Again, this is probably a silly example. Feel free to look through all of these things, right? Because as you can see here in this return to list, sorry, let me click on this pencil here. You can see that aside from all these new and popular ones, we have a lot of options. We can attachments. So these are triggers, right? This is what's going to enable the uh, kick off the automation rule. So if an attachment is ever deleted from a page, from a blog post, if a block's commented on, if it's labeled, if a page is archived, the page is copied, a page is commented, if a page is deleted or edited or moved, or if there's a label added, right? Or if you're looking at tasks, if somebody changes the status of the task, or creates a task, or deletes a space, archives a space, or you can even do scheduled ones so that every single week, every single day, at a specific time, some automation rule happens. And then for your advanced folks, you can do the incoming webhook. I have no idea how to do these. So I'm gonna skip that whole section. Now, let's go back up to the top and we're just gonna do the page published. As you can see, there's a lot of options. So definitely explore all the different options. And let me know in the comment section if you like these kind of videos, because I do have a couple of in-depth videos for Jira automations, which again are very similar. But if you would like for me to do a more in-depth, maybe more use case friendly, Confluence type of video, let me know so I can start putting that together. Have a DevOps project in your future? Integrating new tools, modernizing a legacy system, or just exploring your options? From assessments to licensing, Release Team has you covered. See how they help the state of Colorado migrate and consolidate multiple legacy tools and processes into your service management. Go to releaseteam.com slash case study. Release Team is an Atlassian Gold Solution Partner. Now, once you pick your trigger, so this is essentially what's going to kick off or be the catalyst for this automation to run, you're going to click save, and then you can add um, branches. So branches are going to be like, uh, think of them like for loops. So this is going to happen for a lot. Now, I this is, I think, an advanced feature. So we'll leave that for a different video. You can also add if conditions. Again, this is a slightly more advanced, but we are going to want to use the user condition because we want to know if the person who triggered the event, the person who created the page is basically me, then I'm going to hit save because I don't want this to happen for everybody, right? So my automation rule that I'm creating here is very specific to the use case of if a page is published and that author happens to be this individual, then I want you to do something. And as you can see, here's the then section over here. And again, it feels like natural language. And so we're just going to add a label. We're going to just add a label that says uh, client demo, right? And I'm going to hit save and then I'm going to name it um, add label when Alex creates a page and then I'm going to turn it on. That's all you really need to worry about. Obviously, there's a lot of details that I'm skipping over. Again, I'm going to come back around and make more videos on this, but this is the bare bones. This is all you need to get an automation up and running. So it's super, super easy. There's a lot of stuff like in the rule details that we're going to cover in future videos. There's tips and tricks in the audit log that I'm going to show you in future videos. But for now, we're just creating a very, very simple rule that should work. Fingers crossed. If it doesn't, we might come back and look at the audit log. But whenever we publish a page, if the user happens to be Alex, we're going to add a label that says client demo. So we're going to go give this a world. So now that we have it done, you can see up here in the top right corner, it's green. That means Confluence is listening. And so all we need to do is go create something to trigger this. So we're going to click on the create button up here, create a page. And I'm going to name this like my demo page one. And in here, I'm going to go, did you know? that automation rules are awesome, right? And we're going to hit publish. And once we do this, we're just going to hit publish here again. No rules intended at all. And you'll notice that there's no label. 
nothing's happening, right? But we're gonna give it just a moment. We're gonna hit refresh in a couple of seconds. I wanna give the automation rule a chance to run. It's not always instantaneous. It does take sometimes a few seconds and usually a refresh. So don't worry if it doesn't work the first time, because even if this doesn't work, we're gonna go look at the auto log, but this should work because I think it made it simple enough that it should work. And so I'm just gonna simply hit refresh up here. And once I hit refresh, you'll notice that now my page does indeed have a client demo. And that basically means I don't have to go to the audit log because I don't have to go troubleshoot. The rule worked as intended. And now, as you can see here, my page has a demo. Obviously, this is just a silly example and you would probably find a more business case oriented example in your life that you would want to use these automation rules for. But that's it. All you need to worry about is the trigger and the then condition, right? When the trigger happens, then I want something to happen. If you want to get a little bit more advanced, you can add an if statement, or you can even do some of those branching for loop type of things, which we will be covering in future videos. So make sure you smash that like button in this video so that I know that you actually like these kind of videos. And we're going to continue to roll out these Confluence Automation videos for you. For nearly 25 years, Release Team has been helping organizations of all sizes to adapt, improve, and modernize their software development environments. Their experts know the tools, processes, and best practices to help you realize your DevOps goals. Let their product experts help you with your next project. Visit releaseteam.com for more information. But that's it for this video. Again, very, very simple. Just get you interested and familiarized with automation rules with Confluence because this is a fairly new feature. This is something that maybe just launched in 2023. I've never had Confluence Premium, so I never had a chance to really test it out. But here I am testing out for the very first time. I really like it. I think this is a game changing feature that Atlassian offers both in Jira and now in Confluence. And I highly, highly, highly recommend you try them out if you've never done an automation rule before. That's it for this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you made it this far and you're not subscribed. Make sure you drop a like if you enjoyed the video. And most importantly, don't forget to check out those links down below as they help keep the channel free. And I'll see you in the next one. So far.